Hey everybody, today I want to kind of talk a little bit about how to put your scene together. A lot of people have the misconception that in After Effects you need to render your whole animation all at once, and that's just simply not the case. Another misconception is everything has to be done in Adobe After Effects. Uh, let me just kind of start by saying there are plenty of tools out there to kind of put different movie clips together. Uh, and Adobe offers quite a few of those. So you may use Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Rush, which we're going to talk about today, which I think is actually way quicker than using Premiere Pro. And uh, today I'm going to just kind of talk about different ways to structure your scene. I'll even show you a way on how you can render it all here in After Effects using kind of a master render layer. All right, so let's get started. To get started, I've kind of set up some abstract animation scenes. So you can see in After Effects here, I have a couple of different animations, very boring, actually nothing is moving, so they're not really animations. But I have three compositions that are roughly 10 seconds a piece, and these animations kind of symbolize your different shots. Now you may have three of them, you may have a hundred of them, but um, having your different shots broken up into different kind of comp sub compositions, or as you can see here, these individual compositions is imperative to organize your project. So what I don't want to see is everything in one giant composition with like 15 scenes, all loosey goosey. I want to make sure that everything is gathered and organized very efficiently and also named correctly as well. So let's start with the uh, way to do it in After Effects. If we're going to put this all together and we had, you know, files that essentially could, you know, be rendered very quickly, I would do this in After Effects. When these scenes start becoming more complex, you're going to notice it takes more time for them to render. So I wouldn't actually suggest rendering them all at once. I would actually suggest rendering the individual compositions, which I'll show you how to do as well. So to put them all together, though, we're going to simply grab the different compositions, create a new composition that in this case, I, I knew there were 10 seconds a piece. So let me actually highlight just my master comp here. And I made sure I have 30 seconds, obviously. Three scenes, 10 seconds a piece equals 30 seconds. I'm going to grab all my different scenes and I'm going to drag them in. Now at initial reaction, you're going to see that these different scenes are stacked upon each other. So we don't really see what we want. Now we can easily just nudge them holding the shift key and they'll snap, or I can actually grab them and I can kind of use different presets to help sequence my layers. So under animation, I can go to keyframe assistant, sequence layers, and I can just hit OK. And as you can see, it does the work for me. So now we have nice animation. And you know, whichever way you choose is really up to you, but this, this is a good method around it. All right, now that we have those layers, we have two options to render here. We can either go to the render encoder or render queue. Uh, for in other lessons, I've used the render encoder. I'm going to go to add to render queue just so you can see what we're doing. When I add it to the render queue, I'm going to hit lossless because I want to change the type and I want to make sure this is a QuickTime file. And this format options is actually my codec. So if you go to format options and click on that button, you're going to see you have a lot of different options to render. Now you don't have as many options as you do in media encoder. So just keep that in mind. This is a basic lesson. So I'm going to keep it set to animation and hit OK. Uh, I don't have any audio. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to pull it in and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to make sure I name this and I'm going to call this AE render and it's going to go on to my uh, desktop here. There we go. And best settings are usually the way to go. So I'm going to quickly render this. Now this isn't going to take any time to render mainly because it's, it's just no animation. It's just still pictures that are kind of going from one to another. With that said, if these were complex 3D scenes, I may want to render each composition, which we'll get to in a second. So render that out. There we go. And I'm going to go to now that file and just give it a test. There it is, AE render. I'm going to open mine up with my VLC player because I'm on a Windows machine. And it's just basically asking me to update. That's OK. And you can see it kind of goes from one scene to the next. All is good and all is dandy. Now, again, what if I had a more complex scene? Well, I don't necessarily need to render all these in After Effects. What I can actually do is if I highlight each scene in the composition here in the project, I can actually add those to my render queue individually. So as you can see now, when I hit the edit add to render queue, scene one is there. And 
you know, go through the same kind of mentality. Quick time, format, options, hit render. Now, at this point, it's just a still image, but you know, you can kind of use your imagination here. Go to scene two, edit, or excuse me, composition, add to render queue. I previously said edit, uh, lossless, quick time. You can even save a preset. I'm just being a little lazy here today. Making sure these go into there. Yep, scene one was already there. There we go. And while that's rendering, there we go. I can go to scene three, composition, add to render queue, render that scene out. And let's just, let's make this one an AVI just to show you don't need to always do movies. So we're gonna have a couple different file formats here. But by selecting the individual scene compositions and adding them to render queue, it will actually give you those ability to render separately. So now I have all my scenes right here. I don't really need this master render anymore, but I have scene one, scene two, and scene three. And these are the three scenes I wanna to use to piece together. Now I could piece them together like you saw in After Effects. So I could easily double click and bring these back in. And a lot of people will do this. It's called pre-rendering. And I can take these, import them back in, go to my master comp, and let's delete all those. And I could simply drag these down, go to animate, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, and it's going to ask me, you know, how I want to put them in. Uh, in this case, I did it backwards because I selected them backwards. Let's do it this way. It's all about how you highlight them. There we go. And it will play. Now, believe it or not, because they're flattened movies, if this will actually render longer or easier in the long run. So that's one way to do it. But I want to teach you a new program. So instead of doing that, I have Adobe Creative Cloud. I'm going to go to Adobe Premiere Rush, which comes with your Creative Cloud package. This is basically a quick and easy stripped down version of Premiere. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Create New Project. I'm going to go ahead and highlight my different scene folders. Now you'll see right here from the start that the AVI file isn't showing up. And that's interesting. So um, we wanna keep that in mind as we work. So maybe we need to go back in here, go to that scene three, double click on it. And let's render that out as a, as a movie file. So let's add to render queue. This time we'll make sure that it is a quick time. Luckily these things take no time to render at all. Give it a few seconds. Awesome. And uh, it's saying unable to preview, but it will be there. Let me switch out back to desktop. All right, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna select one, two, three. So I've highlighted all my files. It's as easy as that. I go to the bottom right-hand corner. Now I can sync these with Creative Cloud. I don't wanna do that because I don't want these random files sitting in my uh, wasting space, but this is going to prepare the media and import it for us. A lot less work than Premiere because what this has actually done is done the sequencing for us, right? And now we have all three of our files. Now, Premiere Rush is actually really easy. What we can do is we have our stage, obviously, that you can see here. You know, we have all sorts of zoom in, zoom out options. We have the play key. We have the scrubber like we do in Premiere. This is basically made a sequence. We have the ability to add different media, titles, medias, voiceovers. I'll talk a little bit about this. We have our bin. Our bin is just basically our library or our project folder that kind of shows us what's in there. Um, we have the ability to duplicate layers, delete layers, cut layers, expand audio, all sorts. We have no audio right now. And uh, control the different tracks. I like to turn on the control different tracks because we're gonna need those in a second. On the right hand side, we have a little more options that we can dive into if we click on them. We have things like the title track tool. If you click on that, you get a lot of really great default titles, which we'll play with in a second. We have uh, different effects and transitions. We have different colors, speed changes, if we wanna change the speed, audio controls, and then obviously some crop and rotate tools as well. So we can really do the second half of our editing in here which makes it a lot easier because we don't need to worry about doing any of this in After Effects. So let's start with the basic. Let's do a simple fade in and fade out between scenes. So now that I'm on this little transition effects control or control two, command two, if you're on a PC or a Mac, I can either cross dissolve or dip to black. So I think 
as I click that, you can see that little symbol came in. I'm going to start by dragging it down, and I want to just fade up from black. And you can play with that. You can even go in here and you can make it longer, make it shorter. And then I think what that does is it kind of gives me a dip here at the end. I don't really want that dip at the end, so I'm going to hit delete, and I'm going to drag in across this all. And now you can see, look at that, a nice looking cross dissolve. And I can make it last longer on one side, shorter on the other. I can have it, it kind of turns gray, which is neat. I can have it turn the other way. Maybe this transition, I would want to dip to white. So now it fades to white. Again, I can lengthen those transitions as I see fit. I can even use this slider to make it work to my liking. Um, there's also, uh, beyond that, there's auto reframe, which is really cool if you have like a, um, a specific like track shot you want to do. And then you have pan and zoom, which are kind of faking motion. This is if you have a still picture and you want to kind of a, give the illusion of motion. But we're going to just stick to transitions today. Add that dip to black there at the end. Now, a fun fact is if you actually have audio, you would use the dip to black to fade out of your audio as well. That kind of sounds a little silly. But if you put an audio track in your library and dragged it down here and you want it to fade out, you would simply grab dip to black and drag it on your audio to do that. So now if I hit spacebar, you can see these transitions work pretty good. All right, getting there. I can kind of zoom in and out so I can see my whole timeline here. Let's add a title. All right, so I'm going to go to the very beginning and I'm actually going to grab all of my, my files here holding the control key, nudge them down. I want like a four second title. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the title screen and I have all sorts of Adobe stock titles that I can download, clean, edgy, all sorts of cool stuff. Let's say I want this one, I can just drag it in, drop it on its new track. Now what this is doing is downloading it from Creative Cloud for me. Check that out, that's cool. I'm gonna now nudge it because I don't want it to appear, oops, Try that again. I don't want it to appear on the actual, uh, on top of the actual image. So I'm going to kind of move these down a little. And I can also just plop it right in front if I need be. There we go. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see that title. We have Laura Mipsum. That's kind of nice. But if I want to say uh, project title do that and all the animation comes with it. If I don't like the specific colors, if I want to make them maybe like yellow or something, which yellow and white wouldn't be exactly the best option. So let's do like a lighter blue so we can see it. I can go ahead and change those as we uh, as we see fit. So all of that is already there. You can see it plays. You can see that's really quick so we may want to actually expand that a little bit more. By just dragging the edge of the clip. Cool. I don't really like that title, but you know, you get the point. It's drag and drop. So now that we have that, we have the ability to go back and maybe get our transitions again. Maybe we do a little nice cross dissolve here, replace that fade to black. Awesome. All right. Once you're done with this, you can kind of add layers. We can add other, you know, if we want to uh, import a new file, for instance. So let's import some media. You can do a voiceover. Uh, maybe you want to import this rocket ship you can hit add that's cool um, i can now take that rocket ship and i can kind of put it on top of my file it takes pngs as you can see that's really cool and you know maybe this rocket ship's just hanging in the corner for some reason who knows all right but as you can see that rocket is there i can go ahead and add different dissolves to that file as well if I want it to fade in and out. Uh, this isn't necessarily meant for animation, though you can do some simple animation, but just know that this is more about piecing together your already animated After Effects elements. I think we need to cross this all in here too. There we go, oh, awesome. All right, so at this point, once I have that, um, I can simply go up and hit the share button and I can finalize my project. So I have 36 megabyte project. I can call this, uh, let's say this is our project one. Uh, last name Dombrowski, put this to YouTube eventually. I can actually upload this straight to YouTube if I really want and sign in and publish directly. So that's a great thing. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit export. 
let that run through and let's see what we get. So this has put it in a folder for me. I'm gonna view in my Explorer. It looks like it went into my documents. There it is. Let's drag that out so we can see it. And voila, we have a really bad title sequence, but you can see we have all of our stuff stitched together. So those of you who are a little worried about how to transition and how to stitch things together, that's a great way to do it. So using Premiere Rush mixed with Adobe After Effects can be really beneficial. Um, and it's really just depends on your workflow. So hopefully you liked this lesson and enjoyed it and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.